Recently, I posted a video from Iceland where I was doing some landscape photography along the most beautiful stretch of Black Sand Beach on the southern coastline of the country. And it was while I was out there doing some photography and doing a little bit of vlogging as well that the most unexpected thing happened. And that was the untimely death of my beloved Canon 5D Mark IV. Now, as for how the camera died, why it died, and then what happened thereafter when I tried to replace it, that is a story unto itself. So if you're interested in that, I'll link to that video up here. But for the purposes of this video today, I thought it might be helpful just to walk you through some ideas for accessories. Some of these are really cheap that you can add to your camera bag that will not only protect you and protect your camera gear, but hopefully at the end of the day, help you come home with better photos. Quick disclaimer before I begin, all of the products in today's video are linked below in the description and all of them were purchased by me. None of them were given to me uh, for free and nor is this video sponsored. Okay, let's get started. Product number one is the Vanguard Stone Bag. I absolutely love this thing. <laughs> It's basically just a triangular piece of canvas with three Velcro straps attached to each corner. And then those Velcro straps you attach to each one of the legs on your tripod. Now what you do with it when you set it up, as indicated by its name being a stone bag, you basically just look around wherever you are, you grab some rocks, some uh, maybe some wood, maybe some dirt or some sand. Or for that matter, if you happen to be in Iceland, perhaps a giant block of ice if you come across one of those. Whatever you can find that's heavy, you put it in the bag. That extra weight added to your tripod does two things for you. One, it helps secure your tripod and prevent it from being accidentally knocked over. Two, it also helps stabilize the tripod and it minimizes any vibration or shake that might happen should you be uh, trying to shoot during uh, some high wind or perhaps you're in a body of water where there's water kind of hitting the legs of the tripod. Just having that little extra weight to help stabilize the tripod means that your camera is more stable so that when you're shooting with longer exposures, your images will come out sharper. Now there's actually another benefit to using the stone bag that I didn't discover until I was out in the field using it. It's so convenient and nice just having this little pouch right here where you can throw things like lens caps or maybe even a filter or a, a uh, lens hood or maybe even an entirely different lens whatever you've got, it gives you this nice little temporary area for those fiddly little items that usually you have to like stick in the pockets of your jacket or in your pants or maybe you put them on the ground or don't do that. This just makes things so much easier and more convenient. I actually like having this bag on the tripod so much and because it's so thin and it just collapses right up, I just leave this thing attached to the tripod all the time. I never take it off. Okay, item number two is a headlamp, also known as a head torch, which just sounds so much cooler than headlamp. The headlamp that I like to use is the Black Diamond Spot. Now, why do you need a headlamp? Well, if you are hiking in Iceland and you are out after sunset or before sunrise, it's gonna be dark and the ground is rocky. The last thing you wanna do is hurt yourself and have some kind of accident while uh, you're out there in the middle of nowhere, especially if you're in the highlands. And even though in the summer in Iceland it never gets completely dark, you still need to have some kind of illumination when you're out there. I used to have this cheaper one here, which, you know, it, it works perfectly fine. I got this on Amazon for just a little bit of money, but I absolutely love this uh, black diamond headlamp. And the reason I like it so much is, you know, well, one, it has a super bright white light on it. Jesus. The other cool thing about it is that on the side of the headlamp, there are three little blue LED lights that tell you how much of a charge you have left on your battery so that you know before you hike out somewhere whether you need to replace your batteries before you go. And the entire thing is weather sealed. It has this really nice rubber casing all the way around it. So if you get caught out in the, in the rain in Iceland and you're wearing this, you're not gonna have any problem at all. My favorite feature of all is the fact that it has this, 
which is this awesome little red light. The spot only has red. There's some other black diamond headlamps that have uh, green and blue as well, but they all do the same thing. I mean, you just think of this as being like a red light in a dark room. It enables you to see in the dark without affecting your natural vision. And this red light is actually far more polite. If there's other photographers around you trying to shoot um, using long exposure, the last thing they want is somebody walking in with a just a giant white spotlight um, because it's kind of obnoxious and it's uh, a little bit <laughs> rude. Definitely recommended get some kind of headlamp. Doesn't have to be Black Diamond, but if you're looking for one, I do recommend this, the Black Diamond Spot. Okay, item number three, cleaning supplies. This topic is actually so important that I have three different accessories that I want to share with you. The first one is the rather obvious rocket blower. This thing is just, I mean, you buy it once, you use it for a lifetime. It is a non-invasive safe way to just get dust particles off of your lens, off of the mirror if you have a DSLR, or off of your sensor if you have a mirrorless camera. Mirrorless cameras are especially susceptible to dust and little particles getting on the sensor and then those things get on your photos. To pick up one of these rocket blowers, they don't take any batteries, they don't consume any energy, they're awesome, I love this. Second item that you should bring is a microfiber cloth. They're fantastic for cleaning your lenses if you get like water spots or anything like that on the front of the glass. They're safe, they're not gonna scratch. If you do buy some, if you don't have any and you need some, buy some in bright colors. Don't buy like this like black and gray because I found that I lose these all the time. You can't see them in your bag, they get mixed up with your stuff. You can't see them in your pockets. So buy them in bright colors because that way you're guaranteed not to leave one behind. All right, the third line of defense for cleaning your gear is a box of lens wipes. Now, I absolutely love these. These are made by Zeiss, which is obviously a brand name that you know uh, because they make really awesome lenses and they know a thing or two about glass. And I bought like a couple of boxes of these, I think about four years ago, and they've yet to dry out. It's safe, it's not gonna scratch your lens. I love these. I just grab a pack of them every time I leave for a trip and I just throw them in my camera backpack. And that way I always have some cleaning supplies with me no matter where I am. Okay, item number four is a waterproof backpack cover. Now, if you already own a backpack and you don't have a waterproof cover, definitely consider buying one. You can find lots of generic waterproof covers out there that should fit the backpack that you have. And anything is better than nothing. Because if when you're out in Iceland, and if it starts raining, which it has a tendency to do, and if you're out in the middle of nowhere, you're going to get soaked. And then your bag is going to get soaked. And then the stuff inside of your bag is gonna get soaked. And that just sucks. So if you don't have a cover, just get a generic one, and that should be good enough. However, if you are in the market for a new backpack, what I would recommend doing is looking for one that has an integrated waterproof cover. And I'll show you what I mean. This bag here is the one that I use. It is the Lowepro ProTactic 450AW, a super popular backpack. I see other photographers carrying these all the time whenever I travel. They're awesome because you can fit a ton of gear in them. They're also small enough to fit in the overhead bin of an airplane. I've never had problems uh, carrying this as a carry-on and I just love it, a really great bag. Now, if you're a low pro user and you have one of these bags too, it wouldn't surprise me if you didn't even know this was here because I didn't know it was down here for uh, a while after I bought the bag. But if you just flip the bag over and look on the bottom, there's a little uh, Velcro kind of pocket down here. And you open that pocket and inside you'll find a gray waterproof cover. Now the thing that makes this special is not the cover itself, but the fact that, and this is probably gonna be kind of hard to see, but attached to the cover is this little bit of nylon here. And this is then sewn into the bag. So this little piece of fabric keeps the cover attached to the bag at all times. So you can just pull it out, wrap it around your bag. I love that little feature, just having it attached to the bag and knowing that the cover is the exact size that I need to fit the backpack so that it's not gonna blow off, it's not gonna leak or anything weird. 
I think it's just really worth the investment. So if you haven't considered one already, consider picking up a Protantic 450 AW or any kind of camera backpack that has an integrated waterproof cover. Okay, the next item on the list, number five, is a USB charger for your car. Chances are the rental car that you get when you head over to Iceland will have some integrated USB ports in it. The problem with those ports I have found is that oftentimes they have barely enough power to charge a single phone. When what you really want to be doing is to be charging batteries. You wanna be charging some of your gear when you're out driving around, not taking any photos. And then I just carry this with me all the time. I keep it in my backpack and, uh, and that way, no matter where I am or what kind of car I rent, I know I'm gonna have uh, sufficient power to power all the different batteries that I have. Okay, next on the list, number six is without a doubt, one of my least favorite accessories, and that is the lens hood. The reason I really dislike these things is that they're just so bulky. They take up so much space. Every single lens that you buy comes with one of these things. They never really stack up together very well. And I mean, sure, you can kind of mount them on the front of the lens backwards and all that kind of stuff, but then they just take up more room in your bag. Ugh, they're just annoying. The thing is though, is that when you're in Iceland, there is just a fair amount of precipitation in the air all the time. Whether it's rain coming from above or rain that's blowing at you sideways, perhaps you're photographing a waterfall and there's mist kind of blowing all around you. So one of the best ways to protect your lens and to keep that water off the front of the, of the glass is to just stick a lens hood on there. So unfortunately, I think these are really necessary. By the way, there's a product out there that's called an ultimate lens hood. I've seen this um, around and it looks kind of interesting because it's a one size fits all lens hood. So it looks like it'll fit all my different lenses. It packs flat, it's lightweight. I've never tried it. I don't know anyone who has one. So if anyone knows anything about it, feel free to leave a comment below. Okay, number seven is a protective rain cover for your camera body and lens. Similar to the uh, waterproof cover I talked about a minute ago for your backpack, it's also a good idea to have something similar for your camera body and your lenses when you're out shooting. Now, there are some people who just like to use shower caps or cheap plastic bags or, you know, just little kind of hacky solutions like that. But I think for something like this, especially when you think about it and you've got like, you know, eight to $10,000 worth of camera gear mounted on top of your tripod, you kind of want to protect it. You want to take care of it and, um, and not let happen to you what happened to me. So in the spirit of that, I think it makes a lot of sense to get a protective rain cover. This one was made by a company called Storm Jacket. It's kind of expensive for what it is. I mean, it's, I think it's, it cost me something like $30. And it's really just a, a nylon, a black nylon bag that has down here at one end, it has uh, kind of like a, um, a cinch down here. I'll go ahead and put the camera in so it makes sense. So down here at this end, the lens comes through and then you use this little cinch right here to tighten it around the lens. So regardless of what diameter lens you have, uh, this should be able to tighten to it, no problem. And so then once you have that tightened on there, then down here on the bottom of the bag is a little Velcro uh, opening that you can open. And you can see this is the mount for my uh, telephoto here. And then it's just a matter of, here's a tiny little tripod. And then the uh, ball head of your tripod can just go right up into the bag and the bag then covers it. So not only does it give your uh, camera body and your lens protection, but it also just keeps moisture off of the uh, top of your ball head as well, which is kind of nice. Then in the back of this, this is actually something I like about it. The back of it is just completely open. There are some camera bags, so like protective rain cover bags out there you'll find, which have like this, clear plastic thing on the back of the bag back here. And they expect you to, you know, continue to operate your camera normally and, you know, push all the buttons and interact with the screen here through that clear plastic. I don't know. I mean, in my opinion, I think it just makes so much more sense to have just 
a loose kind of bag like this that completely covers the back of the camera. You know it's not going to get wet. And then when you need to shoot, you can just fold this back a little bit, stick your hands inside of this bag here, and you're able to use the back of your camera and the, and the you know, screen back here and everything just like you normally would, as if it wasn't raining at all. So the fact that they didn't try to get too clever with the design of this bag and just left it open like this is actually pretty cool. So why do you need one of these? Well, because it does tend to rain a fair bit. This will just keep moisture off of your camera. And not only that, if you are out shooting on a, on a beach where there's sand blowing around or dust or anything like that, then that dust and that sand is not gonna get into the buttons and into all the little crevices on your camera, which is just such a pain to get out. Um, I ha it happened to me a couple of times when I was in Iceland and it's just no fun at all. This is in the spirit of like, you know, buy cheap, buy twice. It's so much better to just buy it once and spend like 30 bucks, I think. Get a decent rain cover that'll fit your camera and uh, and be done with it. And then just carry this with you wherever you go. Okay, we're in the home stretch now and I'm gonna talk about this next accessory, number eight, which is the L bracket. Now, the reason I'm talking about an L bracket is kind of personal because the first time I went to Iceland, I, Ugh, I don't know what I was doing. I somehow just totally forgot to pack my L bracket for my uh, Canon 5D. And, uh, and I left it all the way at home. There was no way I could get any kind of replacement for it when I was in Iceland. So I was stuck using one of those old school Arca Swiss plates. And it was just such a pain after becoming so accustomed to the joy of an L bracket. So this is my camera here. And all it does is it mounts onto the bottom of the camera, just like a regular a uh, tripod head would, or a uh, plate would rather. And then you can mount the camera horizontally like this on your tripod. But where things get cool is that then you can unscrew the ball head on the tripod, pick up the camera, and then just do that. You don't have to loosen the ball head and like turn the camera over, flop it over rather awkwardly and you know try to shoot it like that. Oh man, after you get an L bracket, it will forever change the way um, that you shoot. I, I'm telling you, I love these things. Now, this one that I have in, uh, in my hand is a Sunway Photo L bracket. It is designed for the 5D Mark IV. When you buy an L bracket, you need to buy one that matches the camera body that you have. And the reason for that is because you want a tight fit. You don't want there to be any movement or any kind of uh, looseness. And you want it to have the necessary openings cut in the L bracket so that you can still access ports on the side of the camera and that it doesn't like cover your battery uh, door on the bottom or anything weird like that. So get an L bracket and look for one that'll fit your camera body and it will forever change the way you use your camera. Okay, number nine is a tip about SD cards. SD cards, of course, are your lifeblood. It's where you store all of your photos. All of your gear is replaceable, whether it's your camera, your lens, your tripod, you can replace all of those things. But the one thing you can't replace are the photos that you take when you're in Iceland. And the last thing you wanna do is to spend a bunch of days out there shooting and then something to go wrong with your SD cards. And then you lose all your photos. And then the whole trip is just basically a bust. I'm just, I'm getting anxious just thinking about it right now. Don't do that. What you need to do is you need to protect those SD cards. One of the easiest, quickest, um, kind of no-brainer ways of doing that is to just get a card case. Get one that's shockproof, that's waterproof, that has a nice clasp on the side of it that actually locks and is tight. And then you open this thing up and inside you have all your different SD cards, you have your micro SD cards, and, um, and then you're organized as well and you always know where your cards are should you need one. Now your second line of defense, as good as it is to have an SD card in here, honestly, it's not enough you need to have at least one backup of your photos while you're traveling. And this is what I do is I always travel with one of these one terabyte USB rugged external hard drives. This one is made by SP Armor. It's a little bit cheaper than some of the other ones you'll find out there. I bought this like a few years ago and I've never had a problem with it. I bring my MacBook Pro with me, I plug this in, Every night I just get in the habit of transferring everything from my SD cards to the uh, hard drive. And then I have at least one extra copy of that data 
should anything go wrong with my cards. Okay, so that's it for the products. I also have a few additional tips concerning your trip to Iceland, which I hope you'll find useful. The first tip is to bookmark the website road.is. This is a website that provides live, up to the minute, weather and road closure information for all of Iceland. You need to check it every day while you're there just to make sure that the roads are open and that there's going to be nothing getting in your way and blocking you from getting from point A to point B while you're driving around Iceland. Okay, tip number two. I talked a little bit earlier about batteries and about charging batteries in the car and all that kind of stuff. I actually have uh, two more tips regarding batteries. The first tip, and this is a tip that I picked up by watching one of uh, Kai's videos here on YouTube. I've followed Kai for years and, and uh, this tip in particular, uh, I adopted and I put it to use and man, does it make a difference. The tip is if you have multiple batteries, which hopefully you do, you're gonna want more than one battery, by the way, for your camera, especially if you're out shooting all day. The problem is, is that when you buy additional batteries for your camera, you can't really tell which, from the outside, which batteries have been charged and which ones have not. What I would recommend doing and what I picked up from Kai is to label your batteries. Get a label maker and then print little numerical uh, labels on each. So I have one that's just bat one, and then this one is bat two, and then I have bat three and bat four. Once you have these numerically labeled, then you know if you have battery, th excuse me, <laughs> then you know if you have battery three in your camera, then battery one and two are dead. And the reason you know that is because after you charge all your batteries, you would take battery three out of your camera and put battery one in there. So you always start with battery one and then move on to battery two, battery three. I mean, little things like this just really take some of the headache out of just managing all these different pieces of gear and equipment while you're traveling and you're on the road. I just, I love this tip. So definitely label your batteries. Oh, and by the way, while you are making labels for your batteries, you can also make some labels for your lens caps too. This is another little hack. I love this um, because a lot of times it's hard to tell the difference between a 77 millimeter lens cap and an 82 millimeter lens cap. They all start to look the same after a while. So with this, I just label it with whatever the uh, lens is. And this is like the 2470 uh, lens cap here. Then when you have it on there, then when the lens is in your bag and it's sticking straight up, you know when you look in the bag which lens is which. Before I go about batteries, one more tip. In case you don't know already, batteries hate cold weather. Cold weather and cold temperatures are the enemy of your equipment. This happened to me when I was out there in Iceland last time where I had, as I was talking about before, I had battery one in my camera and battery two and three were fully charged and in my camera bag. And by the time I pulled out battery two towards the end of the day, battery two was nearly dead. So a tip from my uh, friend and uh, fellow photographer, Andy Mumford, who I traveled to Iceland with last summer. When you have your batteries charged, and if you're wearing like a down jacket or a parka or something like that, stick the batteries in an inside pocket. My North Face parka has uh, some interior pockets, which I can unzip and then stick the batteries in, zip them up. And because they're close to your body, your natural body heat will keep the batteries warm and they'll then keep their charge. Another way to keep your batteries warm, this is one that I heard Thomas Heaton talk about one time, and that is to put all your batteries in some kind of bag or a pouch and then go out and buy one of those little hand warmer packs. You see these like in gas stations and things like that. Take one of those packs, drop it in the bag, and then you can put all your batteries in your backpack even when it's like bone chilling cold outside and those batteries will stay warm and they'll maintain their charge. My next tip regards using your tripod on a beach. Now, if you happen to be out on a black sand beach like I was, what you want to do when you set up your tripod, well, let me first tell you what you don't wanna do. Don't just leave all of these folded up and jam the tripod right down into the sand. The reason is because when you do that, then the sand gets inside of all these little threads and all these little gears in here and stuff, and it just gets nasty. That happened to me while I was out there, and I had to take a rather awkward shower with my tripod in order to get all of the black sand out of it. 
And then of course I had to dry it and then, you know, put it back together. And I don't know, there's just something about it. After you take a tripod apart for the first time, it never quite feels the same when it goes back together. I don't know, maybe it's just me, maybe I'm imagining it, but for me, when I'm traveling, I would rather not be cleaning my tripod and taking it apart. What I would recommend doing is just loosening the first leg and extending this um, just a few inches or you can just extend it all the way out, whatever you wanna do. What that does is, is that then it keeps this part of your tripod above the sand. And the only thing touching the sand and going into the sand is this first part of the leg where I don't know what kind of tripod you're using, but for me, this is just nothing more than a little rubber foot down here. So there's no issue with like sand getting on it or in here or anything like that. Cleaning that is so much easier than having to try to clean all of this later if you're just sticking the whole tripod down in the sand. My next tip is backup gear. Now, this is something that, uh, this is a tip that I wish that I had followed during my most recent trip to Iceland because the only camera I brought with me was my Canon 5D Mark IV. I mean, the only full frame EF mount camera that I brought with me. And when this died, I was completely out of luck. You should really consider bringing some backup gear. Bringing a backup of something like a camera body, which costs thousands of dollars, or maybe even a drone or you know something like that, obviously that can get very expensive really quick. A couple of thoughts. One thing you could do is if you happen to have a friend or a colleague or someone you know that has a camera body similar to yours that will match lenses that you have, see if there's a way that you can borrow it. Maybe give them a little bit of money and just pack that bag away. Maybe check an extra suitcase at the airport. You just wanna make sure that you have something with you. Or if you don't know anyone, then just get something from a rental store and bring it along with you. Okay, my final tip is to just be prepared when it comes to your clothing. Bring appropriate clothing for the trip. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have the right boots and socks and jackets and hats and gloves and all these different things because I don't know about you, but there is nothing more miserable than being cold and being wet. When you're out in the field and you're trying to be creative, you're trying to be inspired and create awesome photographs, and yet you're shivering and you feel horrible because the weather is so bad. This is a topic unto itself, so I think the best thing to do is for me to leave a link up here to a video that was done by uh, my friend Andy Mumford who went through a great list of gear for uh, winter photography. It lists everything that you need, all the different layers, all the different things that you uh, need to pack with you. Okay, that's it for this video today. Thanks so much for being here. I hope something in it proved to be helpful and, um, and perhaps avoid disaster while you're shooting in Iceland, like what, what happened to me. So take care and have a great trip and I hope you come back with some awesome photos.